Now, my ex-wife had gotten pregnant, but at the time she chose not to have a family because she wanted her to pursue her career instead. I agreed with her. Is that a sin to have an abortion? Before I answer that, let me backtrack here. Now, the night that my ex-wife and I did our husband and wife duties, mm-hmm. that night I dreamt of fishes swimming upstream. I was like, whoa, what a weird dream. But when the revelation came to me, I knew what it meant. So the very morning, I said to her, you're pregnant. She said, stop being ridiculous. Later, as time passed, I came home one day and she said, she had just came from the doctor and the doctor said she was pregnant. I asked, how long? She said, two and a half months. That's exactly the time frame from the time that I had the dream and told her to the revelation that the doctor gave her. Now, before I can answer, is it a sin to have an abortion? This is the bigger question. God gave through revelation that the wife had conceived. We decided to end a life. Now, it is written in the scriptures that before your substance was, or before my substance was formed, you knew me. That is referring to the cellular level. The moment of conception is where life starts. A woman ovulates every month once she is menstrual. She's not concerned about being pregnant if there is no insemination of semen. It's not a single act. It requires a man and a woman to create life. Now, once that union happens and the beginning beginning of life starts, to prematurely take it is considered murder. There's a scripture in the Bible about that. I'm going to share it in the um, uh, little headings. Read it carefully. The scriptures that I post or the messages in my videos, take the time to read them because this is the word of God. So let's just get to the point. Yes, it is a sin to have an abortion. It, no one on the planet can get pregnant without sexual intimacy. Even Mary, the mother of Jesus, God sent Jesus in the spirit to be born through her to enter the world as a man. So, yes, I had committed murder of my own unborn child. Does God punish you for sin? No. Sin punish you when you sin. If you touch a hot surface, it's going to burn. You don't blame somebody else for you putting your hand on that surface and getting burned. It is a cause and effect. A woman sheds eggs every month. Now, once she is impregnated, then that becomes a life. She, now she's concerned of the, the life growing within her. She feels the change within her body. So it is wrong to have an abortion, regardless of your opinion, because there's no human on the planet that is not here as a result of a male and female coming together to create you. 
had they decided to end you in the womb, you would not be here. So we don't have a so say or say so in that situation. We are 100% reliant on the mother to make that decision to bring us into the world. Now, what's more important is, was I punished for that? I can't recall, but there are many negative things that happened as a result of that, but it is not God punishing you. It is sin itself that causes the negative impact for doing something. You drink, you get drunk, you drive, an accident happened, who do you blame? You have no one to blame but the fact that you drank too much. God already laid that law down in the scriptures. Don't get drunk. He didn't say you can't drink. He made alcohol. And if you remember, Noah was the only one and his family that, that God saw fit to put into the ark, to preserve, to repopulate the earth. When Noah exited the ark, the first thing he did, the scripture says, was plant a vineyard. Now, if you know how to read the scriptures, they say he planted a vineyard, then he got drunk. Obviously, he didn't plant it today and drink tomorrow. Time had to pass for the grape to mature and then for the grape to be squeezed into juice and then for that juice to ferment to turn into wine. So you have to know how to read the scriptures and not take things out of context. And as a result of him getting drunk, there were some negative things that happened by one of his son uh, heading, leading towards the, the, the gay type of uh, incident. You have to read the scriptures. Now, I need to add this. Like some people say that in the scripture, does the Bible actually say this? But just because there is no word Trinity doesn't mean that the Trinity exists. Now, they did not say specifically that the gay situation, what exactly happened, but the connotation is there. The implications are there. And it's clear that that's what they're referring to. So you cannot uh, use that as an excuse to say, well, I won't believe that because it doesn't say that. There are many situations, knowing from my own wife, ex-wife, or girlfriends, that never physically or verbally ask to be intimate. But just to look in her eyes, I know what she wanted. So you see, stop this nonsense thing that you have to be verbal to actually communicate with someone. Because you don't. An eye, a look, a gesture, and you know exactly what it means. A nod. So people use that, oh, did they say, or you know, was it verbal to, to isolate certain circumstances? And you know, as God is our witness, that that's nonsense. Because you also have experienced the word tacit. It's communication non-verbally. Anyway, that was another uh, important information through the ministry that you need to understand about how to live right Abortion is a sin. But the great news is that God has forgiven me. Will I do that again? Uh, obviously not. So that is the thing. If we were judged based on what we have done, no one would enter heaven. We are judged based on the decision we make to put our faith in Jesus to live according to God's laws, strengthened by the Holy Spirit to fulfill His commandments. And because Jesus fulfilled the commandments of God and did not sin, once we put our faith in Him, His indwelling Spirit empowers us, teaches us how to live a life without sin because again this is very important people still think that oh you have to sin the bible says so if a man or woman is saying oh you have to sin so no 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 the bible itself says if you are in christ you do not sin can you sin the option is always there do you sin it says no because you the seed remains in you that's like saying a woman is ovulating she can't bring forth life 
but once she has conceived, now life has begun in her. Two separate stages. There's no in between or compromise. You're either not pregnant or you are pregnant. You know, there's no such thing as you're kind of pregnant. You're not kind of alive. You're either alive or you're dead. And once you are alive, then you have an opportunity to make right with God. And only Jesus can do that. So, that is going to conclude this message on abortion. There's only male and female, since it takes two to create one. That is, in a sense, the trinity which I've already shared with you. We are triune. I'm sitting here talking to you, but yet within myself, I possess the DNA of my mother and my father, and so do you. We are triune. That, it is, that is what God means when he said, we are made in his image. It is not what you see on the outside, because what's on the outside is flesh and made from dirt. God is not made from dirt. He is a spiritual being, and beyond the what he shared with us, we cannot understand beyond that, knowing that he's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we are made in rich, mom, and dad, triune. Yes, it's a mystery. That's what the Bible says. I'm Pastor Rich, Walking Ministries Online, and I will see you soon.